Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about the rules of derivative in calculus. So last time we talked about how to solve for the derivative as a function, and now we're going to look at some of these rules of uh, solving for the derivative, so then that way it'll make our lives easier. Because um, I want to be able to solve for the derivative without having to go through the definition every single time, so I want to see if there are some functions that will allow me to solve for the derivative without having to, you know, go through uh, the motion of like writing it all out using the formal definition. So here are some of them that you might might want to use and uh, you might want to learn in fact they're going to be very useful from here on out the first one we're going to talk about is going to be the power rule where it says that if f of x is equal to or sorry if you have uh, y is equal to actually let me kind of underline this uh, if y is equal to a monomial where it's uh, x to the power of n where n is not equal to zero then the derivative y prime we can denote that as n multiplied by x to the n minus one so what that means is the following. Here are some examples. If you have y is equal to x to the third, then y prime its derivative is 3x squared. So note what I did was the 3 in the exponent went outside as a multiplier, and then the degree of the polynomial would then be reduced by 1. So that's where the 2 came from, and that's where the 3 came from. Whereas the second one, if y is equal to x to the 9.2, then y prime its derivative will be the 9.2 multiplied by x raised to the 8.2. So again, bring down the exponent and then decrease it by a power of 1. So in the third case, if y is equal to 1 over x squared, which I think I'm going to rewrite so that we can follow this, uh, use this power rule, this is the same thing as x to the negative 2, then y prime would then be equal to negative 2 multiplied by x to the negative 3. Or if you want to write as a fraction, then it's going to be negative 2 divided by x to the third. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'll go ahead and derive this rule, so then that way you can see where it actually came from. So you can go ahead and use it from here on out. So here's the proof. Let y equal to x to the n, basically the general form of what we have. Then I want to solve for its derivative uh, using the formal definition. And again, remember, once we derive this, you can just go ahead and use the rule without having to do this every single time. So limit as h approaches towards 0 of x plus h to the n minus x to the n all divided by h. So remember, we're just using this rule right here, the def using the formal definition of derivative, where it says limit as h approaches towards 0 is f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h, where f of x is supposed to be our equation that's over here. So that's where I came up with that one. Now, if I'm going to clean this up, uh, here is what we're going to get as a result then. We have limit as h approaches towards 0. Now, the bottom is just h, so I can't do much about that. But the top part, we're going to have to expand that out. So that x plus h raised to the nth power, so that's what we call a binomial expansion. And so what will happen is you're going to have n plus 1 number of terms. So meaning whatever the exponent is, that will determine how many terms there are. So for example, if there is uh, n is equal to 5, then there will be 6 terms. n is equal to 7, there will be 8 terms, and so on and so on and so on. Now, the important part is actually just the first term and the second term, and you'll see what happens in just a little bit. If I were to write out that expansion, the first term would then be x to the n. The second term, according to my binomial expansion, is supposed to be n multiplied by x to the n minus 1 multiplied by h. And then after that, you're going to have, uh, let's see, I think it was supposed to be n choose 2, and then we have x to the n minus 2 times h squared, and so on and so on and so on. And all the way into the last term, which is supposedly going to be h to the nth power. So that is supposed to be the first part. Then you also have minus x to the n, that was over there to begin with. Okay, so all of that right there, that is basically coming from this. Now, do you need the rest of the terms? The answer is no, because I want you to notice what's happening here. The first term is x to the n. The term x to the n, that's from f of x. That right there is nice because those two are going to cancel out. Every single term that's remaining in the exponent, there's always going to be there. Uh, there's going to be an h in there, and that happens every single time when we do this with a polynomial function. So that's exactly what we're seeing right now. Now. Since every single term has an h in there in the numerator, then what that means is I can now go ahead and divide through. So limit as h approaches towards 0. 
the first term, if I divide by h, then I'm going to have n multiplied by x to the n minus 1. The second term is going to be n choose 2, and we don't really care about what that is numerically. But what's left is that we have x to the n minus 2 multiplied by h. And then so on and so on and so on, all the way to the last term, which is going to be h to the n minus 1. And remember, the key factor here is that h is approaching towards 0. So that means that any term that contains h in there, they're going to be equal to 0. And that's good, because that means that everything besides the first term, they're going to be all 0. So in the end, you end up with n times x to the n minus 1, plus 0, plus 0, plus dot, 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 all the way to 0. And that now just leaves you what we just derived, which is n times x to the n minus 1 then. So that's going to be y prime. And remember, uh, the notations for the derivative, you don't always have to just write y prime. Sometimes we write it as dy dx as well. So you choose whichever one works for you. Or sometimes you might see f prime of x. So, you know, all of that works out proper, uh, the same way. Okay, now that we derived it, let's go ahead and move into the next rule. The constant multiply rule. This rule says that if you have y is equal to a constant, where c is going to be any real number, uh, then you're multiplying that by f of x. The result is that the derivative is going to be y prime is equal to c multiplied by f prime of x. So here are some examples then. If y is equal to 5 times x to the third, then y prime is equal to 5, see it's a 5 carries over, multiplied by 3 times x squared. So the 3 times x squared, that's because that's the derivative of x cubed. So note what's happening is that the 5, which is a constant multiplied by the polynomial part, is just carried over into the next part when you solve for the derivative, assuming that the constant is multiplied there to begin with. So the answer for that one is just 15x squared. Take another one. What if we have y is equal to 4 times the square root of x? Well, if it helps, maybe I can write that as an exponent. So 4 times x to the 1 half. So according to this constant multiply rule, right, then that means the derivative would then be equal to 4, because the 4 carries over, times, according to the power rule, 1 half multiplied by x raised to the negative 1 half, because 1 half minus 1 is equal to negative 1 half. That's from the power rule from before. And just to clean that up a little bit more, so we get now 2 times x to the negative 1 half, which then you can write as 2 divided by the square root of x. Okay, so this time for the proof of the power constant power rule, uh, we can do that right below it. So again, let y equal to c times f of x. Then y prime, according to the definition of derivative, is limit as h approaches towards zero. Of c if we take what we have right there and uh, factor out the c, because you'll notice that's what they have in common is for every single one. Then we have the following. Limit as h approaches towards 0. We have c, which I'm going to factor out. And we have f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. And uh, here, let me go ahead and do this one step further. Since c has nothing to do with h because they're two different variables, then I'm going to go ahead and take it outside of the limit. And I can definitely do that because, again, c and h are not related. C is a constant, H is a variable, so they're not, uh, they are independent of each other. So C now is multiplied by the limit of F of X plus H minus F of X, all divided by H. And lo and behold, if you recognize this guy right here, that's just the formal definition of derivative for F of X. So that I can replace with then F prime of X then. Okay. All right. Next the derivative of a constant, so this one should be very easy, hopefully. Uh, it says that if y is equal to a constant, then the derivative is equal to 0. Okay. So for example, if y is equal to 5, then y prime is equal to 0. If y is equal to e, the derivative is equal to 0. And if y is equal to pi, the derivative is equal to 0. So anytime that y is just a function uh, that's a constant, the derivative is 0. And I hope that that actually makes sense, because remember, for any graph that you have y is equal to a constant, the graph itself is supposed to be just a plano horizontal line like this. So y is equal to a constant. And remember that when you solve for the derivative, it's like saying, hey, what is the slope at any instantaneous point? Well, the slope of any horizontal line should always be equal to zero. So that's where this is actually coming from. 
So that's kind of like a geometrical perspective of this. Nonetheless, here's the proof on the right-hand side. Again, let y is equal to c uh, is equal to f of x. So then y prime, according to my formal definition of derivative, is going to say the following then. Limit as h approaches towards 0. f of x plus h, well, any point on the graph is always going to be c, so that gets replaced by c. Minus f of x, which is also equal to c, and all divided by h. And so now, uh, limit as h approaches towards 0. c minus c, that's just 0 over h. And since we have 0 on the top, then that means that uh, the result is that we are going to get uh, 0 then as our answer then. Okay? So let's see. Now the last one right here, the sum difference rule, this is kind of like putting everything together then. Now, uh, it says that if you have a function where you're, uh, which consists of two other equations that you are either adding or subtracting, then the derivative is going to be the derivative of one plus the derivative of the other, or the derivative of one minus the derivative of the other, okay? So if y is equal to f of x plus or minus g of x, then y prime is equal to f prime of x plus or minus g of x. So you can basically solve for the derivative independently and just add them all up. So here we go. Let's go ahead and write these up. So if y is equal to 5x to the third minus 10x plus 1, then y prime is equal to, according to the sum difference rule, 5 multiplied by 3 multiplied by x squared minus 10 multiplied by 1 multiplied by x to the 1 minus 1, which is 0. And then the derivative of a constant is supposed to be equal to 0. Okay, so cleaning that up. We're supposed to now get 15x squared, and then minus 10, and that's going to be our derivative, okay? Next, uh, if y is equal to x squared plus 1 times x, I want to find its derivative. Now, this one's a little bit tricky because what we have is actually not a sum or a difference, but instead a multiply. And so the way to remedy that is actually uh, going to be we have to multiply this out. So uh, first, let me go ahead and rewrite y. So y, according to, if I just multiply using FOIL, uh, let's see, we're going to get x to the third plus x. And now we can go ahead and apply the sum difference rule. So y prime is going to be equal to 3x squared, because using the power rule, plus the derivative of x is going to be equal to 1. So that's going to be my derivative there. And finally, for this last example, again, same thing, right? If y is equal to x plus 1 over x, I don't actually have a sum or difference, so I want to actually write it in terms of sum or difference. So that means that y is equal to, now I'm going to just divide through, x divided by x plus 1 over x, so that's equal to 1 plus 1 over x. And if you want, you can write that 1 over x as x to the power of negative 1, so you can see the power rule then. So y prime would then be equal to the derivative of 1 is then equal to 0. And then uh, for the other part, the derivative of x to the negative 1 would then be negative 1 and then times x raised to the power of negative 2. So negative 1 over x squared is my solution there. Okay. Um, so be very careful because this right here, uh, when I take the derivative, right, there isn't a rule for a uh, product rule. There isn't a quote-unquote product rule for the time being. Uh, sorry, I, I, I should re reword this. The product rule is not simply just take the derivative of one function, multiply by the derivative of the other. So that is to say, if y is equal to f of x multiplied by g of x, then y prime, unfortunately, does not equal to f prime of x times g prime of x. And we'll see that uh, in a little bit because that's actually a, um, a theorem that we need to prove. And similarly, um, uh, not equal to here, if y is equal to f of x divided by g of x, then y prime does not equal to f prime of x divided by g prime of x. So unfortunately, you can't just divide through and do that then, okay? Okay, so the last one, here's a proof, and then I think we're going to be done then. So here we have, again, as we said, let at y equal to f of x plus g of x. So y prime, according to our formal definition of derivative, is f of x plus h plus g of x plus h minus f of x plus g of x, all divided by h. Okay, so you can see that the first part, that is the entire equation, replacing it in terms of x plus h. 
And then the second part, that is supposed to be my, I guess, uh, equation again. Okay, clean this up a little bit. So let's see, limit as h approaches towards zero. Uh, let's go ahead and reposition some of this. f of x plus h minus f of x, okay? And then we have plus g of x plus h and then minus g of x. So all I did was I just kind of like resort them a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. Now, the first two terms, if I put them together, put them un both under the same h, you would get f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. Then for the other part, the third and the fourth part, we have limit as h approaches towards zero of g of x plus h minus g of x, all divided by h. And now hopefully you can see that the first part, that is just my formal definition of derivative for f of x. So that is just going to be f prime of x. Then whereas the second part, that is my formal derivative, uh, formal definition of derivative or g of x. So that can be replaced by g prime of x. Okay. All right. So hopefully this is okay with you guys. Um, yeah, you probably need to try this out on your own a little bit. Uh, and please feel free if you have any questions, leave it on the comment. And I will go ahead and try to get back to you as soon as you can. Okay. All right. Have a good 